This is the layer two engineering presentation on VLANs, part of the Campus Network Design and Operations Workshop. Virtual LANs or VLANs are what allow us to split switches into separate virtual switches. The idea is only members of a VLAN can see that VLAN's traffic. Inter-VLAN traffic must go through a router. This, for example, will allow us to reuse router interfaces to carry traffic for separate subnets. In Cisco routers, you do this using sub-interfaces. In Juniper routers, you do this using IRB interfaces. It is also useful in servers, especially with virtualization. Virtual machines for different networks, for example, public versus private or student versus administration, can be created and exist on the same physical um, virtualization host. Local VLANs. This is where we have two or more VLANs on a single switch. The switch behaves as if it's separate several virtual switches sending traffic only within VLAN members. Access ports are where end nodes are connected and you're configuring them as members of a VLAN. By default, all ports of a switch are members of VLAN 1. Newly created VLANs must have an ID other than 1, and then you add ports by moving them out of VLAN 1 into this newly created VLAN. Let us look at what it looks like at a diagram. In this diagram, we have a simple switch with two VLANs. The orange or amber VLAN is VLAN 20. The green VLAN is VLAN 30. In each of these VLANs, we have three end nodes and they are configured as access ports. So you have the VLAN 20 nodes and the VLAN 30 nodes. The VLAN 20 nodes can only send traffic to other VLAN 20 nodes. They cannot send traffic to VLAN 30 nodes. Um, this switch behaves as if you have two different switches, an orange switch and a green switch. So now let's talk about VLANs across switches. Two switches can exchange traffic from one or more VLANs. The inter-switch links are configured as trunks. In this case, they'll carry frames from all or a subset of a switch's VLAN. Each frame carries a tag that identifies the VLAN it belongs to. You can think of the tag as a sticky note with an ID with just the number of the VLAN that the frame belongs to. 802.1Q is the IEEE standard that defines how Ethernet frames should be tagged when moving across switch trunks. This means that all switches that support 802.1Q from different vendors will be able to exchange VLAN traffic with no problem because they will tag them the exact same way. So let us look at the structure of an 802.1Q tagged frame. In this slide, we have two Ethernet frames. The one at the top is a normal Ethernet frame. The one at the bottom is an 802.1Q tagged frame. The numbers are the size in bytes of each field. Starting with the fields that are similar, you have the preamble, same size, the start of frame delimiter, they're both one byte. Um, you have the destination and source addresses. Remember, these are MAC addresses. This is why they are six bytes each. Then for a normal ethernet frame, you have a two byte type stroke length field. You have the data, which is other layers and the CRC to check for errors. In the tagged frame, after the addresses, instead of the type length field, you have a two byte tag priority identifier, just a number to tell you which tagging protocol you're using, and then um, a two byte tag. That two byte tag has some structure, which is shown at the last row at the bottom in gray. You have three bits for user priority. Some people use this for QoS. We advise you not to do that and just ignore them. There's another bit that is historical. It used to be used to tell you if this tagged frame is on token ring or not. But what is important to us is the 12 bits at the end. This is where we can put our tag. So those 12 bits represent your tag. Now, since there are 12 bits, you can have two power 12 different tags, which is 4096. 
So if you're trying to create a VLAN on a switch, it will not allow you to create an ID above 4095 because there's only 12 bits for the VLAN tag itself. And then the rest of the frame is as above. Note that a switch that does not understand 802.1Q tagging can forward an 802.1Q tagged frame. Because if you look at the format, you start with the preamble, you have the frame, then you have the addresses, and then the tag protocol identifier would be the type length field. And that's all that a switch usually needs to forward the frame. Some switches even forward the frame just after receiving the destination address. Um, they can already start beginning to forward the frame. So a switch that receives this tagged frame and doesn't understand the tag will be able to forward this frame based on the source and destination MAC addresses. The only problem is it will not be able to treat the frames from different VLANs as if they belong to different switches. But the protocol itself was written to be backwards compatible, which is very, very good. So in this diagram, we can look at a representation of VLANs across switches. We have two switches which were identically configured as the switch we have earlier. Each one has three nodes in VLANs 20 and 30. And we've introduced a trunk port, a cable on the trunk port in between these different switches. And all the frames that are flowing in between the switches are tagged with um, orange for VLAN 20 or green for VLAN 30. So the switch that receives it on the other side can tell which VLAN this particular frame um, should belong to. So I've been mentioning the terms tagged and untagged. Frames that are sent out through access ports are not tagged. These are normal Ethernet frames that we saw in the slide defining 802.1Q. And also the frames that you receive are not expected to be tagged either. You can typically configure your switch to ignore tagged frames on an access port. This is because you're going to connect end nodes to that port. These will be things like printers, the uh, network printers, there'll be like desktop machines where you you, you, the device does not even need to know what VLAN it's um, allocated to. You only need to tag frames on switch to switch links when you are transporting multiple VLANs on the trunk links. And a trunk, however, can transport both a tagged frame, an 802.1Q tagged frame, as well as a normal Ethernet frame, an untagged frame. The catch is the devices on both sides, the switches on both sides must agree which VLAN that untagged frames are going to be assigned to. 